Hey everybody, in this tutorial I am going to be going over the base plate for activity 4.8H. So what you want to do is you want to go to the assignment page and then go and click on the document for activity 4.8 and then you're going to scroll down to number 8 and for this exercise what you're going to do is you're going to be creating a pretty simple figure uh, looks like a rectangle and then adding several different holes uh, some are repeated uh, but some are on two sides one on the front or and one on the back or top and bottom however it is you decide to build the part so we're going to start like we've started all the other exercises and we're going to go ahead and open up on shape and then name the file as baseplate underscore your last name so let's go ahead and do that now create document baseplate underscore your last name <laughs> Okay, so again, you could do the front, uh, you could do the right, you could do the top and the bottom. Um, it really doesn't matter which uh, work plane at this point you're using. Uh, it just depends on how you want to orient your figure. So we'll just continue to use the front. So I'm going to hide the top. I'm going to hide the right. And then we'll focus on the front. And so again, we're going to go ahead and create a sketch. We're going to create it on the front work plane. And then we're going to change our view to front. Okay, now as I mentioned before, we're going to be drawing a rectangle. So let's figure out what that overall size of that rectangle is, and that's really where we should start. So notice we have two sides of this uh, rectangle that we're going to be uh, drawing for the base plate, and because two sets of holes are going to go on, one set's going to be on one side, and the other set's going to be on the other side. But we'll get to that in a little bit. So for the uh, front work plane, what we're going to do is we're going to draw it uh, with a width of 11 inches. So here's the width and then a height of four inches and then do a depth. When we extrude it, uh, the thickness of this piece is going to be 0.5. So we can do the, all those steps now. All right. So let's go ahead and click on the rectangle tool and we're going to use center point rectangle. We're going to go ahead and click in the middle and then we'll draw a rectangle out and then we're going to dimension and we said the width is going to be 11 the height is going to be 4 so click on the right or left edge and make that 4 and hit enter and then we're going to finish our sketch so we're going to hit the green check mark and then we are going to hit isometric view and we are going to extrude it. Okay, and notice it pushed it forward, right? So I usually like to push it in the opposite direction because I like to focus on that front face. And then we're going to set that depth to 0.5. Enter. And then hit the green check mark. Okay. So notice again that the front work plane is still visible. So we're just going to go ahead and hide that. So now we can start adding in some details. So the start of this base plate is pretty simple, just the width, the height, and then the thickness of it. So now we're in three dimensions. So now we can start adding some features. So one of the first things we're gonna do is if you notice on the figure, notice it's got these rounded corners, okay? And so we could have done this in the sketch, but I'm gonna go ahead and add the fillet features because anytime we have a round, we have a fillet. And so each one of the corners is gonna be 0.5 and that's where this TYP, uh, signals to us is that it's a typical dimension for each of the rounded corners. So we're going to have a round of 0.5. So let's go ahead and do that. So what you're going to do is come up to the toolbar and you're going to select fillet. We're going to change the radius value to 0.5. And now we're just going to have to kind of rotate our view cube around to select each one of the corners. We should probably be able to get three of the four from this view. So we're going to click this corner. We're going to select this corner. This corner. And now we're going to need to kind of rotate our view around here. So turn it this way, zoom out a little bit, and then click this corner. So really, and notice on my mouse, see how it has four uh, next to my mouse with the arrow. Um, that's telling me I've selected all four corners. And once I've done that, now we can go ahead and hit the green check mark. And then hit isometric view. And now we have our rounded corners. All right. So now we're at 
ready to start adding in some of our holes. So um, if you notice here, we have four holes going across the middle and then four in the corner on the back side. All right, so let's start with these here. Um, so it's really important that we just get these holes in the right position. And you can see there, they've kind of drawn an axis line here to line those up to help us to tell us it's right in the middle. Um, and you can see the dimension right there is two inches from the top edge. So all these uh, holes are gonna be aligned from the top edge to two inches, so it's right in the middle of our part. And then the widths of each of the holes, the placement of each hole is gonna be slightly different, okay? And then you'll also notice that the types of holes are a little bit different. So we have two holes that are countersink. Those are gonna be the ones on the outside ends. And then um, two in the middle uh, or in between those outer ones are just going to be 0.3125 through holes. So let's go ahead and add some points in and then we'll add in, uh, we'll place them and, and get them all correct. So first thing we're going to do is go back to our sketch. Okay. And we're going to put these holes on the front side. And so we're going to create a sketch on the front plane. Okay. And that's sketch two. Now we're going to turn our view so we're looking at it straight on. It might need to zoom out a little bit. And so now I need to add in the point tool. Okay. And I, now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover and I'm going to go on the left hand edge. I'm looking for that little square because that square is telling me I'm in the middle. Now, if you wanted to make sure that you were in the middle, we could draw a construction line horizontally straight through. Okay. That would make sure that I'm in the middle. Right. So, um, that's one way of doing it. Uh, we could also dimension from the top edge. So that's what we're kind of going to be doing here. All right. So now, so let's go ahead. And so now I've got the point tool selected. I'm going to now just put four, one, two, uh, let's see, three and four. Okay. All right, so I got four points in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to dimension those, make sure they're all correct, okay? And um, let's make sure they're all in the right position before we actually add the whole features to them. So notice, again, we said from the top edge they all should be two inches, so we'll check the first one, and then we'll go from left to right. All right, so the first one here is uh, 0.4375 from the left edge with a height of two. So go ahead and dimension. And again, we just want to check from the top edge, make sure it's two inches, which it is. That's good. So we know they're all lined up. Okay, and that's good. And it's already driven dimension. So now we're going to go ahead from here to here, and we're going to make it 0.4375. That shifted it over. So I'll just move this down so you can see that a little bit better. Okay, so now the next point is 1.5 from the left edge. So keep the dimension tool selected, select our left edge again. And we're gonna make that one 1.75, 1.5, I'm sorry. Okay, so I'm gonna it in closer, double check that dimension. 1.5, perfect. And then the third point is gonna be five and a half, which should have been in the middle. I could have placed it there in the middle to begin with. I just didn't, right. And this time, just for space sake, I'm going to put it down below. I could put it up top. The dimension up top doesn't matter. Okay, and then the last dimension is 0.4375 from the right edge. So we'll do that. Okay, so now they're all dimensioned and placed in the right location. So now we can go ahead and finish our sketch and now add in the holes. So the first two holes, the ones in the middle are the pretty easy ones. They are just regular 0.3125 through holes times two. That means they're both the same. So we're gonna go ahead and select isometric view. We are going to select the hole feature. Okay, uh, we're gonna change this back to simple. We're gonna keep with it through and then the dimension again was 0.3125 so we'll change that to 0.3125 and 
And then we're going to select the two holes, one there, one there. And so now it places them, and those two are the exact same, so I can click them at the same time and then hit the check mark. Okay, now when I do that, again, what you'll notice is my outer two points went away. Uh, and that's because I've applied the feature. To get that back, all I need to do is go over to my features bar and click on the little eye next to sketch two. The original two points will come back on the outsides. And now I'll add those uh, holes in as well. So let's look at those dimensions as well. So we know it's a countersink. They're 0.25 through uh, for the shaft of the hole. And then the countersink is a 0.5 diameter with an 82 degree. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go ahead and select hole. This time we're going to change it to countersink. It's going to stay through. And we're going to change our shaft to 0.25. The opening again is 0.5. 82 degrees is what we want. And now we're just going to go ahead and choose the two outer holes. Okay, and then we hit the check mark. So now we've gone ahead and placed our two holes. If we rotate it to the other view, okay, you can see the holes going all the way through because both sets were through holes. And so that's our first set of holes. Pretty simple there. Now, if you notice on our figure, we have holes on the other side. Okay, so now I kind of have to go to my bottom view here and notice that these are in the corner. And so the placement of those holes is 0.5 from each side. So from the left edge and from the bottom edge, they're going to be 0.5. There's going to be four of them. They're one in each corner. And notice again, this is another type of hole feature. This is a tapped hole. Okay. So again, we'll set that up for a tapped hole, um, but let's get those points in first. So we're going to rotate our view around because this is going to go on the other side. So we're going to create a sketch on the back side. So click sketch, make sure you rotated your view around. Now you're adding the sketch to the back side, the op side where you drew the original holes. Okay, sketch three is now on the back, so now I'm gonna change my view to back. Okay, zoom out a little bit. And again, what I'm gonna do is add the, use the point tool. And this again will allow me to um, place my points in. Okay. I'm gonna make sure I'm dimensioning each one of these holes, 0.5 from the corner. So this one's slightly off, 0.5. So I select there left edge to there and drag up make sure that's 0.5 just want to make sure they're in the right spots I'm just going to keep working my way around, making sure that I have the correct dimensions. So each one should be 0.5 from the top and bottom edge or left and right edge. Okay, so now we have the dimensions and the points in the right spot. And so now we're going to go ahead and finish our sketch. We are going to hit isometric view, but it's going to rotate it around. So I'm just going to rotate it to the back. And now we're ready to add our hole features in. So all four holes are going to be the exact same. So we're going to go ahead and you can see that because it says times four. So we're going to and add in our tapped hole again. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to select the whole feature. Okay. We're going to change it back to simple. Okay. And blind. Change it to custom to ANSI. Okay. And then we're going to change clearance to tapped. The size is a number eight with a threads per inch of 32. Okay. And then does it have a depth? So let's see. Yes, it has a depth of 0.2875. So we're going to change the depth here to 0.2875. And then we're going to hit 
each one of the holes. All the rest of them are the same, so we don't need to change any of that. And then we're just going to select each one of the holes. One, two, three, and four. And so now, uh, once we have that, we're going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And now those holes again. So now we talked about this before, but just to remind you, in Onshape, in the detail view of this, we can't really see the threads on the inside. But when we do the drawings, the CAD drawings for them, you'll be able to see the dimensions. All right, so now we have the holes on this side. And actually, if we go back to isometric view, you'll notice because those had a depth, they're not poking through. They're not through all on this side here. So now we're going to go. So uh, this was the base plate. If you have any questions, just let me know.